When petroleum engineers first discovered how to extract oil from the earth in the mid-1800s, they faced an immediate challenge. How to move this valuable resource from remote drilling sites to refineries and markets? The answer came in the form of pipelines, but laying those steel arteries across rugged terrain would require machinery that didn't yet exist. For decades, pipeline construction remained brutally labor-intensive. Crews of men dug trenches by hand, lowered sections of pipe using wooden tripods and block and tackle systems, and prayed that nothing went wrong. A single mistake could crush workers or destroy days of progress. The petroleum industry was booming, but its infrastructure development crawled forward at a painful pace. Everything changed when Caterpillar entered the picture. Caterpillar's involvement in pipeline construction began almost accidentally. During the 1920s and 1930s, oil companies started adapting the firm's crawler tractors for fieldwork. The machine's ability to traverse soft ground and steep grades made them invaluable for hauling equipment to remote drilling locations. Some innovative contractors began mounting booms and winches on these tractors, creating improvised pipe handling machines. These early modifications were crude, often dangerous, but they proved the concept. A tracked vehicle with a side-mounted boom could lift and position pipe sections far more efficiently than any manual method. Caterpillar engineers noticed what their customers were doing. By the late 1930s, the company began developing purpose-built attachments for pipeline work. The side boom pipe layer was about to become a formal product category. The first factory-produced Caterpillar pipe layers appeared in the 1940s, built on the proven D7 tractor platform. These machines featured a boom mounted on the left side of the tractor, a counterweight system on the right, and a powerful winch capable of handling substantial loads. What made the side boom design brilliant was its simplicity. Unlike conventional cranes that lift loads directly overhead, pipe layers suspend their payload to one side. This configuration allowed operators to work alongside trenches without the machine itself having to straddle the excavation. The counterweight kept everything balanced and the crawler undercarriage provided stability on uneven ground. During World War II, pipeline construction took on strategic importance. The famous Big Inch and Little Big Inch pipelines, built to transport oil from Texas to the East Coast after German U-boats made coastal tanker shipping too dangerous, relied heavily on mechanized equipment. Caterpillar-based pipe layers proved their worth on these massive government projects, handling 20-inch and 24-inch diameter pipe across 1,400 miles of American terrain. The end of the war brought an explosion in pipeline construction. Natural gas distribution networks spread across North America, requiring thousands of miles of new lines. The Middle East oil fields demanded infrastructure to move crude to port facilities. Caterpillar's Peoria factories ramped up production to meet surging global demand. The company introduced improved models throughout the late 1940s and 1950s. The D6 platform became popular for smaller diameter work, while the D8 handled heavier pipe in demanding conditions. Each generation brought refinements better boom designs, more powerful winches, improved counterweight systems, and enhanced operator controls. One critical innovation was the development of the hook block and choker system. Early pipe layers used simple hooks that could slip or shift during lifts. Engineers developed specialized rigging that secured pipe sections firmly, reducing accidents and speeding up operations. These seemingly minor improvements had major impacts on productivity and safety. By the 1960s, Caterpillar had formalized its pipe layer lineup into dedicated model numbers. The 571 pipe layer based on the D7 tractor became the industry workhorse. Its 21,000 pound lift capacity handled the most common pipe sizes with ease. The 572 series arrived on the D8 platform, offering greater capacity for larger projects. Major cross-country pipelines increasingly used 30-inch and 36-inch diameter pipe, requiring machines with serious muscle. The 572 delivered 35,000 pounds of lift capacity, making it the choice for trunk line contractors. For the biggest jobs, Caterpillar introduced the 583 series on the massive D9 chassis. 
With lift capacities approaching 50,000 pounds, these giants could handle 48-inch pipe, the largest commonly used in the industry. The 583 became legendary on projects like the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, where extreme conditions demanded maximum capability. No project tested pipe layers more severely than the Trans-Alaska Pipeline system, constructed between 1975 and 1977. This 800-mile line crossed three mountain ranges, hundreds of rivers and streams, and terrain that ranged from permafrost tundra to active seismic zones. Temperatures dropped to minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and the 48-inch diameter pipe weighed over 100 pounds per linear foot. Caterpillar pipe layers formed the backbone of the construction fleet. Contractors deployed 583 series machines in numbers never before assembled on a single project. The equipment operated around the clock during brief summer construction windows, laying thousands of pipe sections under conditions that destroyed lesser machines. The Arctic environment demanded special modifications. Engine heaters ran constantly. Hydraulic systems used cold weather fluids. Operators worked from enclosed cabs that had been afterthoughts on earlier models. Many innovations developed for Alaska became standard features on subsequent production machines. Over the decades, Caterpillar developed numerous specialized pipe layer configurations for specific applications. The 561C and 571C models featured extended booms for extra reach. The 572R and 583R variants included larger counterweights for improved stability with heavy loads. Underwater pipeline installations spawned its own equipment category. Caterpillar worked with marine contractors to develop barge-mounted pipe layer systems. These floating platforms used multiple machines working in coordination to feed pipe sections to lay barges, maintaining continuous production on subsea projects. The H-series pipe layers, introduced in the 1970s, represented a significant redesign with four models incorporated lessons from decades of field experience. Improved hydraulics increased responsiveness, better boom geometry enhanced lifting efficiency, upgraded operator stations reduced fatigue during long shifts. As Caterpillar's D-series tractors evolved into the modern track-type tractor lineup, pipe layer designations followed. The transition from letter suffixes to numerical variants reflected ongoing development. The 561M and 571G models maintained the established size categories while incorporating technological improvements. Electronic engine management increased power while reducing fuel consumption. Load moment indicators warned operators before reaching capacity limits. Enclosed, Climate-controlled cabs with modern ergonomic designs replaced the Spartan stations of earlier decades. The 578 and 587T represented the ultimate expression of Caterpillar pipe layer development. Based on the D8T and D9T tractors respectively, these machines brought 21st century technology to pipeline construction. Electronic controls, precision hydraulics, and sophisticated monitoring systems made them more capable and safer than anything previous generations could have imagined. The 587T, with its 90,000-pound lift capacity, handles the largest pipe manufactured. Modern trunk lines now commonly use 56-inch diameter sections, and only machines like the 587T possess the muscle to manage these massive components. Contemporary Caterpillar pipe layers bear little resemblance to their ancestors beyond the fundamental side boom concept. Geo-positioning systems allow operators to place pipe with millimeter accuracy. Telematics platforms transmit machine performance data to fleet managers anywhere in the world. Automated grade control systems work in conjunction with survey data to optimize trench bottom positioning. The company's AccuGrade system, introduced in the early 2000s, revolutionized pipeline construction efficiency. Receivers mounted on the machine communicate with GPS satellites and base stations to provide real-time position information. Operators can see exactly where the pipe needs to go and monitor placement accuracy on in-cab displays. Product Link Telematics took remote monitoring to new levels. Contractors can track fuel consumption, idle time, maintenance requirements, 
and utilization rates across entire fleets. Caterpillar dealers receive automatic alerts when service is needed, enabling predictive maintenance that reduces downtime. While Caterpillar dominated the pipe layer market for decades, competitors emerged. Komatsu developed its own side boom models, primarily for Asian and European markets. Liebherr produced crawler crane variants adapted for pipeline work. Various manufacturers offered aftermarket boom and winch packages for third-party tractors. Despite competition, Caterpillar maintained its leading position through integration advantages. Purpose-built pipe layers from Peoria matched powertrains, undercarriages and boom systems optimized to work together. Aftermarket conversions often suffered from component mismatches that reduced efficiency and reliability. The company's global dealer network provided another competitive advantage. Pipeline projects in remote locations required parts and service support that smaller manufacturers couldn't match. A Caterpillar dealer in Kazakhstan or Nigeria could source components for a 583 just as easily as one in Texas or Alberta. Modern pipeline construction faces scrutiny that early operators never imagined. Environmental regulations require minimal surface disturbance, precise excavation, and careful restoration. Pipe layers adapted to meet these demands through improved ground pressure distribution, cleaner engine emissions, and reduced fluid leak potential. The shift from mechanical to hydrostatic drives eliminated one major environmental concern. Earlier pipe layers used gear-driven powertrains that required regular oil changes and occasionally suffered seal failures. Modern hydrostatic systems proved more reliable and contained fluids more effectively. Tier 4 final emission standards, implemented progressively between 2008 and 2015, forced major engine redesigns. Caterpillar developed selective catalytic reduction and diesel particulate filter systems that dramatically reduced nitrogen oxide and particulate emissions. Pipeline contractors working on environmentally sensitive projects could now demonstrate that their equipment met stringent air quality standards. Today, Caterpillar pipe layers continue laying the infrastructure that modern civilization requires. Natural gas pipelines bring heating fuel to cities and feedstock to chemical plants. Petroleum lines connect offshore platforms to onshore refineries. Water transmission mains carry supplies to growing communities. The machines themselves have grown larger, more sophisticated and more capable. Yet the fundamental concept remains unchanged from those improvised boom tractors of the 1930s. A counterweighted side-mounted boom on a crawler chassis still represents the most efficient way to lift and position pipe sections into trenches. Every time you turn on a gas stove, fill a vehicle's tank or open a water tap, you benefit from infrastructure that Caterpillar pipe layers helped build. From the Texas oil fields to the Arctic tundra, from Middle Eastern deserts to offshore continental shelves, these specialized machines have spent eight decades literally laying the groundwork for modern energy and water systems. The side boom story continues, one pipe section at a time.